So next thing to do, stop our father from burning the damn notes. What's going on? What was going on with him? Is there an event happening around there? Ah! Lady Brit, damn you! Can I get there in time? Maybe? I should speak with my father. Father? Or... Where the hell's our father? Don't see them anywhere. Ah! Sneaky bastard. Bernardo has summoned you. Father. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> when is it happening? Uh, ah, it's happening a bit later. I think that might be after they burn the notes. I don't know. Anyway, for now, let's go to Lady Brit. You better not leave, Lady Brit. Oh, this is... Oh, that was Bernardo going to their, their play. Right. Oh, the play's just starting. Let's not watch. Ah! Did I catch them? Is this considered an event? Right? Like, I don't know. Is this... Is this considered special? I don't think it would work like this. I don't think I would just ask them some random question. I think it would be an event and they'd react specifically to it. So I think I missed them. Because that one time when they treated, when they didn't like me, it was like a special thing. I met, talked to them and they're like, what the hell are you doing here? Get away from me. And then they left. All right. There was a special reaction. That wasn't any reaction. Oh, Polonius, God damn it! You're burning the fucking notes, aren't you? They surely did. Burn. Hmm. Father. Let's look at their dialogue. Do they have any hints? With everything that's going on, precautions must be taken. I've still been wondering if I can make them think everything's okay if they wouldn't burn the notes, maybe. But what what exactly is going on that I could make them think is okay? Stop! Hmm. These documents contain burning these papers as a blessing to the one who wrote them. Someday I'll be understand. Mm -hmm. Nah, there's not really anything useful there. If you tell his majesty about this, it'll be my head. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to try telling Claudius about it just to see what happens, but the notes were written by Hamlet. If I tell Claudius about secret notes written by Hamlet, I don't think I'm going to be able to get my hand on those notes. Unless... Unless I sleep with the king again and get into their chambers. Maybe I could then read the notes there. Hmm... Oh, father, I think I'm about to fuck you over real hard. Ah. I think it might be too late, but let's go to the wall, see if we can catch the ghost. I think it is too late. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Lady Brit's back at the bar! There's no way I'm going to make it there in time. I'm so far away. Okay. Do I just talk about... Okay. You? There, there we go. I told you to leave me alone. What is wrong with you? You're like the thing that won't die. Keep coming back again and again. I just want to be alone. I know. I know about Fortinbra. About your mission. Yes. We went over this already, though you still haven't elaborated how you know so much. That doesn't matter now. I'm not here to have you locked up. I want to help you, Brit. 
to the greatest extent that you'll let me. You can trust me. No. M not here. Somewhere private. Come with me. The king. Claudius was supposed to die. That's what I came to Elsinore to ensure. Because my father thought if Claudius were dead, all this would be over. The war would end, Prince Fortinbras and my father would be appeased, and I could go home again. As with many noble families, our roots run strong in Denmark, but father believes Fortinbras will be a more sympathetic ruler. Claudius has ignored most of the nobility's requests, even after I was placed here at court. Now my father and the other nobles want him gone. The longer I go without succeeding, the more I just want to put down my head and sleep for a long time. Maybe forever. Fortinbras. On the subject of domestic matters, I know Lord Fortinbras is going to invade Denmark soon. Ugh. I'm not certain how you learned that, but what difference does it make? If Fortinbras' invasion were rebuked, your father would have no choice but to work with the king. And that might grant a more lasting peace than anything Claudius' death could provide. But that's impossible. How are you going to repel a national invasion? I don't know, but there's got to be a way. Listen. I wouldn't have told you this before, but Fortinbras is already here, just outside Elsinore. He's been here a little over a week. I've been visiting him in town. He's staying in a small room with some officers in civilian dress. They meet late at night in the town square, long after all are asleep. They plan to meet next right before the siege begins on Sunday. I can get you into that meeting, but you can't reveal me. You have to pretend to be loyal to Norway, no matter what you see or hear. Understood. I won't expose you, Brit. I swear it. Hmm. If you're lying to me, I'm not. Good. Be there. I'll take care of the rest. <sighs> As I said before, leave me alone. We cannot be friends, and there can be no trust between us until this matter is resolved. Now you know the truth. Hope it brings you boundless happiness. Lady Brit no longer wants to destroy Ophelia. Okay. That is very, very good. We're gonna have to wait a while for that, though. So it's like... Yeah, it's, it's this event on the very last day. Right at midnight on the very last day. Bernardo questions father. What does that matter at this point? I don't know if I just need to tell Polonius that Bernardo has summoned them earlier. And then maybe it'll work. I don't know. That feels like a dead end to me. It's worth trying on another loop. Obviously, I can't do anything on this one. For this loop, I think I want to laser focus on just a couple things rather than trying to do a whole bunch of things and forgetting what my purpose is and and running out of time to do things that I want to do and overlapping events that where I can't do both. Let's just laser, laser focus on a couple things. Let's focus in on two or three things. Let's focus in on Othello. So just meeting with Othello and spending a lot of time in their bar to see if they talk with other people. Um... And also the whole thing with Brit. Uh, also, yeah, the third thing is also when Hamlet goes onto the boat, I should be there to advance that lead. A journey at sea. If I could only be there at the moment Hamlet steps aboard that ship, I might be able to fi find a way onto it myself. So those three things. Hang out in the bar. Meet up with Brit at that one moment at the very beginning of Sunday. And be there when Hamlet leaves, which I think is sometime around Saturday morning. What day is it? 
It's Friday. That sounds good to me. I feel like I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. So, Brit told me that I can't... Brit told me, don't give them up. And I think I, I definitely can give them up if I wanted to. I think at this point, I have pretty concrete evidence that Fortinbras intends to invade. Which is what I needed to advance Prince Fortinbras' threat quest. Right, uh, King has been reluctant to act. They need more compelling evidence, some source close to Norway that could give me information. So I think I'm, I don't, I think I have that right now, or maybe I'm going to get it during the meeting on Sunday morning. I'm not quite sure, but I could try to tell people about the meeting with Brit to get them to, I don't know, maybe come in and capture the prince while they're vulnerable or something like that. But for this first time through, I'm not going to do that. For the first time through, let's just try to really keep Brit safe. Go with what they say. Don't give them up. Just try to convince the prince, I guess. Am I really going to be able to just convince with words the prince that they shouldn't invade? That seems really unlikely, but I'm going to try. It's all these other loops. Hmm. Oughtn't you be on duty? Is this an event that I've already seen before? Is this an event at all? Oh, it is. I know we've seen these two talking before. This is why your supper stew always smells like half a cask of wine, ain't it? You're down here drinking. <laughs> Leave me to my vices. In my old age, they're the only friends I have. And here I thought we were friends. You? <laughs> Never. This feels new. What are you doing here anyhow? Came to see my granddaughter. The babe's not a babe any longer. She's walking now. But? You have children? But this seems maybe ah. familiar. Thirteen of them. I never spoke of them. How do you feed all of those mouths? Well, now that they're grown, they feed themselves just fine. But, you know, there were some rough years. Before my sweet Isabella passed, she ran all 13 of them like a military regiment. She had the older ones watch the younger ones, and all of them tilled the land and ran the household. She was a lot like you, come to think of it. A real bag of nails. Mind your tongue. There's still enough lady left in me to be offended. Okay, yeah, I don't think we did see that conversation. Hmm. I think we saw a future one. How old is the youngest ah. child now? 14. She's gone and gotten married, too. Making her father proud. Okay, this one I think we saw. I think we maybe missed the first one. Yep, yeah, yeah, this one we've seen. Yes. Let's keep waiting. Almost midnight. Or we'll get a second quote-unquote story. My mysterious paramour. We meet again. Hmm. You mentioned rumors about me earlier. What did you mean by that? Oh. I don't know that they're uh, appropriate. I misspoke. My apologies. I'm old enough not to be shielded from what others think. <clears throat> well... The few who have been within the castle walls claim you're the loveliest woman in Claudius's court. And I must say, I'm inclined to agree. There are also rumors of a less savory nature about your mother's origins and her marriage to your father. Yes. My mother was a servant. That's not a rumor. That's the truth. I see. Is it true, then, that her mother, your grandmother, was a slave? I don't know. My father won't speak of where she came from, and I've been told never to speak of it either. You have the look of a proud Ethiopian about you. Were it not for your green eyes, I'd think you could be related to Empress Eleni herself. Surely you aren't saying there's more than one Empress? Of course. Surely you don't think Denmark is the whole of the world? 
The Romans don't own everything. Haven't you been elsewhere? No. Until now, I've never even left Elsinore. Except to summer in Copenhagen as a girl. And even then, I rode in a carriage. A small walled box leading to a larger walled box. God above. I had no idea. How then do you live in the castle? Are you not lonely? No, of course not. I've got my father and my brother, Laertes. Hmm. And your friends? Uh oh. I'm afraid I don't have many of those. I grew up playing with my brother, the guard captain Bernardo, and the prince. Most people in court were unkind to my brother and I. We looked odd, and they made sure we knew it. I know there are worse rumors about me floating around. So I've never known anyone my own age, not really. I much prefer the company of books. If a book hurts or disappoints me, I can simply close it. What is it like living here in Castletown? Uh. <laughs> I've only lived here two years. No, Ophelia. I am Somali and was sold into slavery as a child. I lived a slave for nearly 15 years. I can scarcely remember the village I grew up in, but it was many distant worlds away from anything I see around me now. When I was captured, I know not where my parents went. I never saw either of them again. I recall our captors put us into the dark hold of a ship, hundreds of us chained so close together that we could scarcely move an inch. This for weeks, and sweltering heat, through rolling waves a hundred feet high. We cried and prayed in our moving coffin. The woman next to me screamed for the first week, then died the next. I know not of what. Her corpse began to stink and swell and rot beside me. Ophelia. If there is a hell, it is in the hold of that ship. I was given over to my master's house in Constantinople. I was made to convert to Islam, though as a child I had scarcely had time to know my village's pagan gods. And I learned to fight. I kept my master's gates and watched over his family as they slept. When I grew older, I saw my opportunity to bring my master great glory as a recruit in the Sultan's army of slaves. My master permitted me to leave his household and serve him there. As I trained and fought for the Sultan, I watched the Ottomans expand their empire ever westward and roll through the white-faced men like lightning. I saw the magnificence of the world unfold before me, and I learned there was an elsewhere. There were other places to be seen. When the opportunity came, I slipped my bonds of war and fled on foot to the west, where I've meandered ever since. Othello. I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. I cannot even imagine. All I've ever known is, well, comfort. This. You've endured so much. I could never have survived that. Yes. Don't say that. The world is full of cruelty and ugliness and gold for the taking, Ophelia. You and I alike both understand how cruel some can be. But you're correct that likewise, I find your upbringing so strange, I don't know that I can imagine it. In the same way, it is hard for you to know the inside of that darkened ship. Hmm. <laughs> well, come see me then. Come see the castle. What? Why don't I show you the way I live? After all, I've seen your inn, and I've heard your stories. I don't know that I'd be welcome at the palace. Not among lily-faced, blue-blooded Danes. Then don't come to the palace. Let me show you the gardens, the grounds, the places I love to roam and read. You'll be safe if you accompany me. I promise it. It's the least I can do. 
if that's what you wish, uh, then so be it. This castle. I can hardly understand what I'm seeing. The gate I passed through was enormous. And the greenery, so maintained. And these trees, foreign and full-bloomed. Ophelia, how do you live here and not walk about with your mouth agape? <laughs> it's all familiar to me. To me, this seems as plain and ordinary as anything else in my life. Anything becomes far less compelling when one sees it each morning. <laughs> that pond. Look at it. It's the perfect size for swimming. And I'd expect it's just the right temperature for a summer night. I feel like this is leading towards some skinny dipping. Ah, excellent. Care for a swim, my dear? I... I can't swim. I don't even think I can float. Don't be afraid. Fortunately for you, I can do both. Come and take my hand. Easy now. You can lean on me. I'll make sure you don't go under. <gasps> my skirts! They're getting soaked! They're heavy like this. Oh. I suppose you'll simply have to take them off then. There's no one around to see after all. Enter a sexual relationship with Othello. Yes. Here, help me with my dress. <laughs> Goodness, I'm soaked through. Uh oh. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> he might not recover that gown. Silk and pond scum weren't made to mix. What is this? What in God's name? Ophelia, is that you I see? <gasps> Your Majesty, who in hell is that? Stop! Oh, this is going bad places. Step away from Lady Ophelia at once. <gasps> the king! My lord! Y Your Highness, it's alright, I'm safe. This is a friend of mine. My king, I am Othello of... I don't give a damn who you are. Leave. No. My lord. With all due respect, my lord, I've done nothing wrong. The lady invited me here of her own free will. We were merely having a swim. He's a friend and a guest of mine. There's no reason to treat him with anything but respect. A friend? Is that what you call this? My nephew is right. You're nothing but a low-born whore. <clears throat> what did you say to her? Okay, yeah. Othello's gonna die here, probably. I am king. I'll say whatever I like. I'm the king of this country and I own your life within my hand. Will you raise a hand against me, mongrel? Then I could gouge you on the spot. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. I could mount your head on my wall like an old black ram. Ugh. Othello. Go. What? Leave, please. I'll handle this. Go now! Do as she says. Goodbye. Girl. As for you, I hope you feel appropriately and utterly ashamed. Try yourself off. Pick yourself up. You've clearly been allowed to cavort freely for too long. Idleness breeds sin. Claudius. You've wanted me to suffer ever since I was a girl and I never knew why. It took meeting Othello to realize that. You've always wanted Laertes and me isolated, hated. I'm not good enough for Hamlet. But I'm not good enough for anyone else either, am I? That's insane. You're merely angry I disrupted this encounter and spitting fire at me appropriately. You're fortunate I won't tell the others of this incident. 
Do as you like. Tell everyone if you must. All of my life, men have been telling me to stay indoors, speak more softly, read less, as though I were a statue. Well, I'm not, and I won't be told what to do anymore. Not by you or anyone. And if I'm not permitted to choose for myself, I'll forge that permission by my own hand. Uh. What just happened? Othello must have returned to the bar. I ought to find him to apologize. Ophelia and Othello now believe that Othello and Ophelia are lovers. Mm-hmm. Oh, that got really nasty. So... We knew... We knew that Hamlet... It, wasn't it Old King Hamlet that sent our mother to the asylum, the sanitarium, or whatever? We knew that they were... A racist. I don't know if I knew that Claudius was. I mean, probably is a pretty safe bet. But this just cinches it. Yeah, they're absolutely a racist. What does it say for my quest now? Othello and I were together for the first time in the woods. It was nothing like it was with Hamlet. He was gentle, but knew exactly what he was doing. It was the kind of quiet, intimate night I've rarely shared with another person, let alone someone unrelated to me. One of those nights when you feel as if you've known someone forever after just a few hours. Something large had shifted in our relation to one another. We were interrupted by Claudius. I've never been angrier in my life. How dare he try to tell me what's appropriate for me and what isn't. I'll do as I like, go where I will. Othello made it out unscathed, but I'm certain the experience frightened him. I ought to go see him as soon as possible. Let's go right now. Um... Oh, wait, which option? Oh, is it? A, is there an event? Oh yeah, event happens oh. when I go in here. You came back. Yes. I'm sorry about everything. Come here. Never. Don't apologize. Never once, from now until death. Understand? You must never apologize for the intolerance inflicted by others. But... You know that this... Our relationship... There are reasons why it cannot be. How can you be so certain? You have your place. The castle is your home. Unless, that is, uh, you were to... Come with me. Come with you? Where? I'm leaving town. With no way to pay back my debt on the tavern, my days here are numbered. Where will you go from here? Mm. South. South to Italy, I think. South to where the summer nights last forever, and there are no snows. Yes, I can see a bright beach in my mind's eye, and a small but sturdy room to call my own. You could come with me, but you could never return. They'd have me killed. You and I both know that. But if you were to come with me, Ophelia, I'd make you my wife. I'd love you with a ferocity to rival the stars. And you'd be free to live however you pleased. Othello. That sounds wonderful, Othello. But I can't. What? Why not? What's stopping you? Ah. Uh... You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Please. All I ask is that you think about my offer. Whether you accept or reject me is your choice alone. If you'd like to escape with me, then you need only say the word, and we'll leave this whole sorry mess behind together. And if not, then I'll take my leave of you. I swear it. I shall never cross your path or trouble your mind with uneasy thoughts again. Ah. Intriguing. 
Hey, creepy fuck. Entertaining Othello's offer, are we? Quince? How did you come here? Does it matter? Hmm. I see all stories, and I know that down this path lies unhappiness. Though of course it won't matter, will it? You're still at the mercy of forces larger than yourself. I, I know I'm trapped, that I can't truly go with him, but I can't help but wonder what might happen. I'll give that young man one thing. He's true to his word. He'd love you more brightly than the stars. For a while, that is. But he is fated to love another more powerfully than you. And someday he'll win her over with songs and stories. I... How can you be so sure of that? I see the lines of fate that run through all worlds. <sighs> her name is Desdemona. How peculiar that even her name means ill-fated. She will be far unluckier than you. You will lose a love when Othello leaves you. But she will lose her life to him. <gasps> you mean he murders her? Such tragedy. Indeed, a terrible thing. I dare say it shall tear him apart. But rest easy that the next few years will be blissfully happy ones. Uh, this is perhaps the happiest of all possible worlds for you. And in that time, you will always be faithful. Hmm. Can you settle for a brief but brilliant bliss? Always watching for the pale woman with the quiet eyes that will eventually, assuredly, win his heart. Oh, I do so love little puzzles like this. Stop this. Leave me be, Quince. <sighs> I'm just trying to help, my dear. But as you wish. There are a lot of jilted lovers out there who would pay dearly for this sort of clairvoyance. So, what do you say? Oh my god. I... I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty confident that what Quint said is true. That that will come to pass. That's horrible. Oh my god, what a horrible way to live. That always on your mind. That soon, this is all gonna go so horribly wrong. Like a guillotine that's just slowly coming down for your neck. And you watch it approach for years. Uh, years? Years? And then... And then after those years pass... What? We... Do we have to wait until we die? However we die in the future? And then we start the loop again? Like, do we live until we're old and then we start the loop again? That sounds horrible. No. No. I'm sorry. But I can't. My place is here in Elsinore. There are still things I must do. And you, there's a whole world waiting for you. Unconstrained. You have to pursue that. It's what you want. I know that to be true. I see. Then let us part ways for now. Ophelia. I want you to know I wish you everlasting happiness. Even if it's not in my company. Find someone who loves you truly and madly. Enough to light the stars. And if they don't, discard them and find the one who does. That's my parting wish to you. Farewell. Whew. Well, that finishes that quest. Quince promised me Othello was fated to love another, but that we'd enjoy a good life together until that time came. Maybe that's enough. Well, two more things to do for this loop, I think. The boat thing, and the Fortinbra with Brit thing. I think the boat thing is going to happen sometime in the morning on Saturday, which is today. So, let's just go wait by the dock, I suppose. Oh, 
Hey, Junior. Well, that's not what I was expecting. That's just going to be the meeting between them and the prince, which we've seen before. Unless this one is going to go differently for some reason. My lady. Further news for you. Um. Hmm. This is a little bit different. Now that they know that we're on to them, they're saying this. Claudius's efforts are regaining focus. I'm concerned. His throne may need to be melted at the base, so to speak. The people are starving and unhappy under Claudius's ill-fitted rule. All they need is an excuse to storm the castle. If there were someone who could lead a siege, better if it was a Dane, perhaps the prince. Wait, does this mean... Is this a hint that I'm going to lead the siege? Would, would I? Could I? That would be weird. And no, he's far too indecisive in his own right. Uh, there is another. A duke's son. He has the love of the people. He would be amenable to your rule. A duke's son. Uh. Wait, who's that? Is that Laertes? But Laertes has sailed for Paris. He's not within Denmark at the moment. What would cause him to return, furious and full of righteous fire? I don't know. No, wait, he has a sister. A delicate little thing, hardly grown. If something were to happen to her, he'd get his revenge in an instant. Either Lady Brit has some sort of galaxy brain idea going on, or... They're just... Betraying us completely. He loves her more than anything in this world. Are you prepared to eliminate her of your own hand? You know her face, her habits, her comings and goings. My men and I are utterly at your liberty. What? Do you want me to kill her? Okay, this seems familiar now. You know it's no easy task. No. Mm, don't think I can. Something doesn't feel right about it. Okay. Hmm. I understand. I will find some other path forward. We'll just meet tomorrow night. That's the meeting we'll be at. Oh! Junior just moved over here. Oh, is this about our father dying? I'm sorry, Ophelia. Your father is dead. Mm hmm Yes. Don't worry, Bernardo. It's all quite expected at this point. Should happen today. Yeah, we're still early in the morning. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Everybody's like, Pfft. it's time we bid goodbye to Denmark once and for all. See, we've seen this, we've seen this event before. It might be different now, but we've seen this before, and we didn't have any option to go with them for some reason. Hmm. This will be good yeah. for you, just like the old days. Yeah, this is the same so far. <laughs> Farewell. Farewell. Hmm. Ophelia. You're here? I'm now away to England, perhaps never to return. Unfer this is the same <sighs> so far. To England. Yeah, I think I need to have different things happen for me to be able to join them. I think for me to be able to join them, I... 
Mm. I think I just need to make sure that Hamlet doesn't kill Polonius, doesn't kill our father. I think that might be the thing preventing me from going with them because they're like, you know, of course you hate me. How could you not hate me? Because they know that we know that they just killed our father. <laughs> I probably need to stop that from happening at least. And I also potentially need to like try to get back together with, uh, with Hamlet, maybe. But I need to at least stop them from killing our father, definitely. Okay, well then the only thing left, lingering in town. Oh, that's where it happens? Right, the same place we died during one of the loops. Yeah. Oh, something's going on in here. What's this? Oh. So this brings Laertes back. Is this where they hear the rumor that Claudius is the one that killed... So it would seem. One who killed Polonius? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, this is that event. Okay. Let's pass some more time. Right about midnight. The thing should happen. The meeting. <laughs> it's a busy day and... The Great Hall, events on and off. Britt asked me to meet her in town around this time. Naturally, I've arrived early. Just staring at every person that comes in. There you are. Hmm? So you did come after all. Of course. Stay silent. Say nothing. If asked, reply only, yes, my lord, or no, my lord. That is all. Do you understand? Yes, my lord. <laughs> <sighs> come on, then. I hear their boots nearby. My lord. That's such a creepy outfit. They look like a cult or something. Greetings. Lady Burkita, tomorrow is the morning we've waited for. All attempts at a coup have failed. No other bloodless option remains. Hmm. Who is this? My servant, your majesty. She speaks a little Danish, and she's quite the ignorant clout. Fuck you. Can she be trusted? Yes, my lord. Hmm. I don't think you should have replied there, Ophelia. They weren't talking to you. As I was saying, we must attack head on. We'll begin by sieging the town at dawn. Are you prepared to assist us in getting into the castle by any means necessary? My lord. There is no need, my lord. The king is already preoccupied. You will be able to enter with ease. The castle will be ill-prepared. <laughs> Excellent. I so detest needless bloodshed. It is my uncle's way to murder and poison his way to the top. Not mine. M mind you be clear of this town at dawn. My men have already begun their approach. I wish no harm to come to any Danes. But if they protest, then I shall lay down my boot unflinchingly. Still, I have high hopes to take Prince Hamlet alive. From what his subjects say, I believe him to be a good man at heart. And you will be his bride. Hmm. Are you not eager? This is a great honor for your family. I am. It's just... He's been through so much lately. I fear he'll be broken by the time the siege is over. He seems odd and mad lately. Not in his right mind. Please, have your men be gentle with him. I will. We'll take him prisoner as quickly as possible. He'll be surrounded by all members of his family who submit to the authority of Norway. Now then. One last unfortunate thing. Hmm. 
Prince Hortonbra is about to kill Lady Britt, aren't they? One last unfortunate thing, they are standing very close to Lady Britt. Do they want to clean up? I think they want to clean up. Your servant girl here. I once heard the most fascinating story about the Danish court. They say that a woman of some noble birth with a dark look about her held the Danish prince's heart. And you, Lady Brit, mentioned yourself that a certain young girl's death could bring about Claudius's demise at her brother's hand. How curious. The way she stands, the way she looks, this woman is no clout, nor is she common. Okay, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Lady Brit is fine, I think, but I'm not. My name is Ophelia. It's true. I am Lady Ophelia. Given your desire to overtake my country, I cannot rightly say it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Prince Fortinbras. <laughs> I assume you're going to kill me now. Hmm. Unfortunately, you're correct. I cannot let you return to Elsinore and warn the others. A full defense mounted against us would mean more death. Although I truly despise the killing of women. In this case, we have no sufficient place in which to hold you until our work is complete. Ah, true gentleman. I shall need every man available for our coup, and this town may well be rubble if the castle will not surrender. It is a most regrettable situation. My lord! Please, you, you're really going to kill her. But she was just... She hasn't done anything wrong. I was the one who brought her. <sighs> Quiet, Brit. My lord, if you're going to kill me anyway, then please tell me. What do you intend to do with everyone in Elsinore? With those who survived the coup? Oh, this is clever. They might spill a lot of details about what they plan, because to them, as far as they know, it doesn't matter at all. If you're about to kill somebody, it doesn't matter what you tell them. They're going to take all their secrets to the grave, but we're not going to take the, their secrets to our grave. We're going to take them to our bed in the morning. Our will be done. Restore young Hamlet to his rightful throne and command him as his ruling lord, of course. From everything Lady Brit has told me, Hamlet is young, malleable, and mad. He will be accepted as an heir to the throne by the nobility, but easily controlled. And from there, we will forge a lasting peace between our two nations, and consume Sweden into this unity with haste. I intend to act swiftly to save as many lives as possible. I will eliminate only those who directly threaten me. You, for example. No! I won't let you kill her. You can't! She's not the enemy, my lord! I brought her here! She's... she's... Isn't there any other way? Because if not, you're going to have to fight me, too. Huh. Chivalrous, Lady Brit, but I do not murder women indiscriminately. Brit. That's enough. Thank you for defending me, but you don't have to anymore. I know what I need to know. It's strange. So strange I could laugh. You killed me once, and here we are now, you defending me. Of all the worlds we could have ended up in, this is the one I least expected. What are you saying? Stop talking like that, are you insane? My lord, please spare her, she's just a girl like me. We never had a choice in any of this. And she's not like me. I might be cruel to her, but she's a good person. Goodbye for a moment, Brit. So incomprehensible to Brit. Hamlet. <sighs> what? So where is our quest now? I know what I need to know. I know what they planned. I have. Uh, let's read this. Brit would have died for me back there. I can't believe it. Of course, right now she doesn't remember any of that. Right now she hates me. Still, I can't let that other Brit sacrifice be meaningless. Now I know. 
Fortinbras is hiding out in Castletown. I have all the proof I need to find him. All that remains to be seen is whether the others will believe me. Yeah, we needed concrete evidence to present to them that Fortinbra is a threat and they're lying about wanting peace. Now we have it. So yeah, did that like finish Prince Fortinbra's threat? Is it just part of Prince Fortinbra's threat? With the help of Lady Brit, of all people, I was able to spy on Fortinbra in town and get the information I needed. I now know where in town the prince is hiding. Perhaps Father or Bernardo could do something with this. Certainly. I think I'll talk with Bernardo first. I don't know if our father really could do much in particular. I mean, I guess maybe, but Bernardo seems to be a more straightforward route to trying to protect us because, you know, they are... I don't, what's their job title? I don't know, but their job is to protect the castle, right? Does it say their job title? Night Guard Captain. Yeah. Makes more sense to tell them than a duke. Uh, what does it say here? When it came down to sacrificing me or standing against the orders of every man above her, Brit tried to save me. All it took was getting to know her. Whatever our relationship was before, I know this now. Brit is not my enemy. She might even be my greatest ally. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. We've made a lot of really good progress. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, first thing I'm going to follow up on is presenting our concrete evidence of the threat that Prince Fortinbras poses to Bernardo.